hoppers or back doors uh, and adds them to the botnets. Okay. So if you're going to build up this sort of attack, this is how, how industrious this thing is. Um, SQL injections, all these things that you've heard about, the 1.5 million uh, websites in one single day done through uh, SQL injection. Here's a tool. It's a Chinese tool. It retails for $30. It requires a license. Um, and actually, the, uh, the encryption of the, the license key means that uh, it's actually their DRM is better than what you'll find in most Microsoft products. Okay. <laughs> Um, so if you want to get some tips on DRM and protecting your code, then these, th these types of guys just know, you know, know what to do. This particular tool, uh, you find a, a new vulnerability in a web type application, you know, a, a new uh, cross-site scripting bug from somewhere. Uh, you type it into this particular tool. Uh, it will then tie into Google. Uh, it will then pull back uh, all the different sites that are potentially vulnerable to it. Uh, you specify a URL where your malware is that you want to install through the iframe and click go. Okay. Uh, this tool gets up to about 5,000 defacements per minute. Okay. So what else? Understanding the iframe business, uh, just to give a bit of, better idea of the scale of things. So we come across all these iframe servers or, that are serving up malicious iframes. So they may have been defaced through cross-site scripting, SQL injection, search engine optimization attacks. Um, or, in fact, it yeah, may be owned by the particular group, um, or there's all the different sorts of schemes. So you can set up this business yourself. Uh, in fact, most of these people will actually pay you to insert the code into your page, a bit like Google advertising. Okay. This stuff then goes onto the exploit script service. So these, again, other, uh, other servers that have been compromised or are parts of botnet empires. Uh, and they are serving up the malicious JavaScript, ActiveX exploits, missing codecs, Office documents, and things like that. So this is where the part of the malware comes in, an uh, exploit, which then, talks, which then connects back to the malware servers. And so these malware servers are doing, you know, providing all the custom malware and all the banking trojans. The thing to realize is that these, all these different parts are different groups, uh, more often than not, and they're all working together as part of an ecosystem. It gets even tougher because then there's another ecosystem down the bottom here, uh, such as providing fast flux services, single or double fast flux, uh, that then protects all of these compromised hosts from being taken down. Okay. So that's what, you know, this is the, the framework for you know, getting those millions and millions of hosts compromised. Now, the, the tools themselves, the drive-by download tools, have become commercial entities. Okay, so in the last year and a half, so here we have you know, Web Attacker, MPAC, I'm sure everyone's heard, IcePack, Firepack, Neosploit, Black Sun. These are all tools, these are all exploit engines that are installed on w compromised websites to serve up the iframe bad stuff. Okay. That's become very, very competitive. You know, here's, a, here's an interesting one, IcePack. Uh, it's probably one of the, the most popular ones that we see out there from a commercial perspective. You know, MPAC is a very interesting one. Uh, MPAC is you know, uh, a, a copy, if you like, of some of the IcePack uh, ingenuity. Um, commercial, two versions. There's the basic version. It goes for about $30. It uh, only contains a couple of exploits. And then there's the advanced ed edition, or the platinum edition. It goes for about $400 and has all the latest exploits as a subscription service for renewable latest exploits and keeping them up to date. Uh, so originally in Russian, but there's now an English and French version. So localization of these uh, tools and that as well. Okay. This is big, big business. Has iframers and once again requires a license to operate. Okay. Now the other side, the malware. So we need a piece of malware and we want to infect a particular machine. Yeah, surely it's a bit hard to create malware. Frankly, here's a, a toolkit which I grabbed earlier from this year. Um, 100 pounds uh, includes all of these particular exploits. You give it a file that you want to install on the remote machine, so some sort of backdoor or a bot agent. Uh, click which exploits you want to embed inside it. So anyone who opens that document will be, um, uh, these vulnerabilities will be attempted to be exploited on that machine to install. Okay. So as far as skill set goes for creating malware and infecting machines successfully, 100 quid. Okay. And it's updated, and so this one's from the beginning of the year, so we just see a few of the more popular um, vulnerabilities and Microsoft vulnerabilities from last year. But they don't need to be perfect, because uh, unfortunately, you know, I released a, helped release a paper with uh, Google and ETH University about two months ago, uh, and we found roughly about uh, 630 million <coughs> hosts are vulnerable to all these attacks that haven't been patched for at least a year. 
other things that are interesting, so these banking trojans, so all the really nasty stuff, here is a commercial one. Okay. So this particular one, Turcojan, interesting, it's made in Turkey. Okay. This is a commercial product. Uh, it contains all of the remote desktop, the web streaming, the video capture, you name it, everything you need to do to copy all of those cool things from, uh, uh, from people's machines and, st and steal that information. Now, how commercial is it? Three editions, the bronze, edi bronze edition, silver edition, and gold edition. Uh, $99 through to $249. Interesting thing about the gold edition, it says six months or nine months guaranteed replacement warranty if it gets detected by any antivirus product. Okay. This is so competitive, this world of creating malware for this type of industry, that they're competing against each other, and these are the selling features. Okay. But it doesn't even stop there. For instance, there are a whole number of tools and technologies uh, for if you take a piece of malware, you want to check to see whether any antivirus product can actually detect it and protect against it. So these tools, uh, so here we have uh, KIMS, um, uh, we have, uh, which one's that? Uh, Scanlix, uh, and uh, this last framework here, uh, Multi-AV Fixer, will actually test your malware. It will automatically pull down all the different free antivirus products, the commercial antivirus, keep them up to date, run your malware against them, find out which one's detected, and then tweak your malware to make sure it bypasses the antivirus. This stuff's free. Okay. So if you want to create a piece of malware that's going to bypass anything, this will help you do it. So let's get into some of the interesting things. So this is, you know, given that we talked about why so many people are being compromised with these hundreds of millions of machines compromised and how easy it is to start a business in there and all this different malware and creating your own business and that. How does it really, really work? Traditional banking malware was focused on stealing the login information. So everything you needed, the bank number, the user ID, the password, session keys, this sort of thing. So you relied on uh, key logging, screen, uh, screen grabbing, video recording, uh, redirection to a counterfeit sites, uh, pop-ups, overlays, session hijacking, duplicating session cookies, screen overlays, all these sorts of things. You know, these are all the good things that we've uh, heard lots and lots about. We'll still find lots and lots of malware doing this. Okay. But from a protection perspective, there are a lot of things you can do. You know, so uh, instead of asking for a full password, you only ask for a certain parts of the password so that uh, screen capture or key loggers can't get all of the password each time. So there's a lot of new technologies or newish technologies that have been embedded into web applications to stop this type of stuff. Okay. But this, this type of malware, traditional banking malware, has been around since about 2001, 2002. Okay. So this is old hat. So a brief, brief thing about man in the middle. So typically, you know, you want to do a customer's PC, connect to the web service, and everything's nice. Okay. So man in the middle, of course, um, the man in the middle sits in the middle, intercepts all the different traffic. So it redirects uh, the connection to the end servers uh, through proxy, uh, proxy setting changes, DNS modifications, or network routing changes. And of course, this allows the attacker themselves to view all the, the text and uh, all the communications in clear text. Um, you so you can intercept confidential data, terminate SSL transactions, um, uh, connections, uh, and modify and inject new content. Obviously, the way to you know, there, there are a number of different tools and technologies that you can use to prevent uh, man in the middle attacks. Okay, and uh, there are a lot of uh, nice algorithms that you can use from the server side to detect whether this is going on. There's a lot of um, uh, heuristics that you can play from a, you know, a large application side about whether you're seeing the same man in the middle appearing on multiple transactions. So from a banking perspective, protecting against uh, man in the middle attacks is a solved problem. Okay. It's still a problem.